The Marburg virus, scientifically known as the Marburg virus, or Marburg hemorrhagic fever, is a filovirus. Filoviruses are very dangerous to humans and primates in the sense that they often cause severe hemorrhagic fevers. If the word filovirus sounds familiar to you, then it's probably because Ebola is a filovirus as well, from the family Filoviridae. The Marburg virus infects mostly humans, but can also infect other primates, pigs, or bats in nature. Bats and pigs are often carriers of this disease, but they are relatively unaffected by it, and then spread the virus to us. The first cases were caused by prolonged, unprotected exposure to mines or caves inhabited by Rosetta's bat colonies, who were carriers of the Marburg virus. After the disease spread to humans, it has started spreading by human-to-human -human transmission via direct contact with blood, secretions, organs, or other bodily fluids of infected humans. Infected fluids can enter the body through broken skin or mucous membranes. The Marburg virus, unlike most viruses, infects, reproduces, but does not usually destroy the host cells through lysis. After entering the body through broken skin or mucous membranes, the virus attaches itself to specific cell surface receptors and recognizes the cell as a host cell candidate. Viral RNA is then released into the cytosol or the liquid found inside cells. Viral RNA is then integrated with the host cell's DNA and transcribed and translated to produce more viral RNA. The Marburg virus has an incubation period of 3 to 6 days, in which it doesn't actively reproduce and remains in the lysogenic phase until that period of time has elapsed. Afterwards, however, instead of lysis of the cell, the Marburg virus is quote, excreted, unquote, out of the cell through the process of exocytosis, and then continues this process again. I say excreted with quotes because viruses aren't exactly what the cells are supposed to produce. As said, the Marburg virus is very harmful and can be very contagious. Rehydration can aid with recovery for infected humans, but there is currently no treatment for the Marburg virus, similar to Ebola. Therefore, it is very important to try and prevent this virus as effectively as possible to prevent its spread. There are many things that can be done. For example, you can reduce the risk of bat-to-human transmission by wearing appropriate protection and following proper decontamination procedures after exposure to mines or caves inhabited by fruit bat colonies. The average human may not venture into a minor cave, but this is very important for scientists doing experiments or making observations. Also, if there's an ever an outbreak of the Marburg virus, make sure all raw food is cooked thoroughly to make sure the virus is not lingering in the food. You can also reduce the risk of human-to-human -human transmission by avoiding close contact with infected patients, especially their infected fluids. Again, wearing proper protection and following decontamination procedures is important. Finally, informing communities that are affected by the Marburg virus about the nature of the virus and necessary outbreak containment measures is very important to making sure that you prevent the Marburg virus as effectively as possible. If you do get infected, however, things are not looking good for you. In the same family as Ebola, this virus causes, you guessed it, the creatively named Marburg virus disease, a form of viral hemorrhagic fever. The incubation period can be anywhere from 2 to 21 days, but is usually between 3 to 6 days. The onset of symptoms starts very abruptly. The usual symptoms include a high fever, severe headache, severe malaise, muscle aches, and many, many pains. By the third day, you might have severe watery diarrhea with abdominal pain and cramping and lots of nausea, and you might even vomit. It gets even worse. After the third day, people have been reported to be ghost-like with very deep-set eyes, expressionless faces, and extreme tiredness. Between five and seven days, there will be possible hemorrhagic reactions that will start occurring. For example, there will be fresh blood and vomit and feces most of the time. In very fatal cases, there will be bleeding from multiple areas, including the nose, gums, and genital area. In fatal cases, between eight and nine days after symptom onset, the possibility of extreme blood loss arises, which can lead to shock and eventually death. The biggest problem with hemorrhaging this badly is that it's very easy to simultaneously bleed from any openings in the skin even from small needle holes from things like an IV drip. Simply put, the virus causes severe inflammation that can cause clotting proteins in the blood to go into overdrive. Eventually, these proteins will run out, and any skin that is broken will not clot. Not to mention the internal bleeding. It's not going to be fun if blood gets in your lungs. If you survive the hemorrhaging, severe sustainment of high fevers can really affect the central nervous system, which can cause a lot of confusion, irritability, and lots of aggression. Even when you're well, the diarrhea can last for up to a week. And finally, in the late phases of this virus, it's possible to have orchitis, which is an inflammation of the testicles. Alright, moving on to a less gruesome part, we come to the history of the virus. There have been several past outbreaks. 
Some notable ones include the first recorded case, which was 1967 in Germany, where there were 31 cases of the virus and seven people died. This is a 23% roughly mortality rate, and it has been linked to laboratory work involving African green monkeys imported from Uganda. In 1998 to 2000, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, there were 154 cases, with 128 dead this time. This is an 83% mortality rate. This was the first major outbreak, with the epicenter of the outbreak being a gold mine, where many workers were infected. Then, in 2005 in Angola, there were 375 cases and 329 people that died. This is an 88% mortality rate, one of the highest ever. This was, and still is, the biggest outbreak of the Marburg virus, where spread was mostly caused by funeral rituals and home care, where infected patients often came into contact with healthy people, which encouraged spread of the disease. That's it for this deadly virus. Well, actually, one more thing. Speaking of deadly, however, you may find it interesting that the Soviet Union actually had an extensive offensive and defensive biological weapons program that involved the Marburg virus. At least three Soviet research institutes had research programs relating to it during the Cold War. It was highly classified, so how successful the Marburg virus program was is unknown. However, as we all know, Russian scientists were really, really smart, and they caused at least one recorded laboratory accident with the virus. This caused at least one scientist to die because of it, showing the potential deadliness of the disease if used as a biological weapon. Just remember, if you ever come into unprotected contact with this disease, smear some fish oil on yourself so you'll smell bad enough to keep people at least 300 feet away from you.